what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here since i'm about a few different topics in this video here again today we'll be talking about scream 6 we'll be talking about halloween ends we'll be talking about hellraiser and then we'll close out talking about joker 2 so just to kick it off with scream 6 scream 6 may be set a year after scream 5 or just a couple months after scream 5 melissa barrera had a interview or a sit down recently with deadline she didn't blatantly say this but she kind of hinted at that by saying that the time that is passed between five and six is the time that is passed between the movies that's what i recall her saying and i'll leave a link to this podcast in the description although again it could be said a few months later and that means i guess tara, tara and her friends were seniors in screen five now here's the interesting thing here for me during this when asked about working with courtney she called her the best funniest down-to-earth person and she feels it's great to have her there because sam needs a legacy legacy star who knows the world in reference to the absence of, of sydney and dewey so the relationship that she says develops between sam and gail is beautiful and something that reminded her of the actual friendship that we know she shares with courtney cox in real life now melissa says it felt like an extension again of their friendship i will say that clips comprehend over on reddit and twitter has also stated gail is going to have scenes with kirby which is something that i've heard about so gail again it sounds like gail is going to have a lot to do we know that was a rumor very early on before filming even started this might be one of the best gail involved screen movies in recent memory uh and again i did hear about her having scenes with kirby i did also hear that gail and sam should have a pretty big moment midway through the movie like a franchise first time ever thing so i hope that ends up being true as well it's always nice to have like some type of some type of sydney gail rivalry play out and we kind of already know gail will have beef with the sisters or some type of drama with the sisters in scream six so hopefully that ends up being executed very well and as far as uh, this relationship that develops between sam and gail i can only imagine of course would start off with whatever this beef they have early on stems from and then it blossoms into a friendship even if it doesn't blossom into that it just might be something that's just very beautiful to witness on screen because of how these two have great chemistry those two being uh courtney and melissa barrera so just to jump on into halloween ends someone on reddit did claim that halloween ends or that they had seen halloween ends and they said that they enjoyed it overall they were invited to some sort of screening some other person chimed in too and said they saw a screening of it as well but this first person i'm thinking of says they enjoyed it overall they did mention how the film seemed like a collection of events that almost have nothing to do with michael and Lori's final battle marketing and then it just happens which is what i was talking about might be a problem with the movie they mentioned there being great kill moments and another user praised the performances from jamie rohan and andy they were impressed with Lori's arc and the other character arcs praised the score so again these are just coming from two people that i came across on reddit i'll say that again the events happening and having really nothing to do with the marketing is exactly why people or probably some people will come out of this movie feeling like they were tricked i mean honestly with halloween h2o at least it's building towards michael and laurie and it's being done for a specific reason in terms of the setup and then you have your payoff ends just seems to definitely just be giving vibes based on everything we know it's giving vibes that that final battle it just randomly happens when really it probably couldn't have and you if you take away the final battle you probably would have ended up with the same exact still good movie or bad movie depending on what our perception of it is of course once we see it it seems like again hyping it around that final battle might bite them when it comes to a lot of people's perception of the movie upon seeing it because i'm telling you right now there is no way this movie is building towards that with any of the stuff prior having anything to do with getting us to there in the sense of like these two actually have a conflict they don't michael and Lori have no conflict <laughs> they're just gonna randomly fight i'm telling you that is probably what's going to happen so i will jump on into hellraiser doug bradley has given further praise to jamie clayton and many would argue his opinion is the only one that matters in relation to pinhead him and clive barkers i guess now doug shared his kind remarks on twitter um and he said i'm a bit blown away by this he's talking about the, the design of jamie's pinhead the clever redesign of the makeup the shimmer of the pinheads the palette whatever the keyhole locket trectonic trichotomy thing is at the throat it's simple subtle disturbing and sexy everything it should be peace and pain signed doug 
Now, I'm going to actually check out the, the Hellraiser movie later tonight, and I'll have a social reaction on my Twitter, and I'll have a full review up on October 4th when the embargo lifts. But yeah, I'm glad that uh, Doug Bradley has been very supportive of this movie in regards to Jamie Clayton and how she looks as the character and just being excited for the iteration and i know some people are like well of course he would do that because he doesn't want to come off negative i mean honestly if he didn't have anything positive to say he i don't think there's anything that would make him obligated to pretend he could just not say anything he could remain silent <laughs> uh, but of course he could always you know punt fake i don't think he's doing that though i want to end this by talking about joker 2 now, this last bit of news has not been mentioned by anyone involved with production. If it has, correct me. This next topic regarding Joker 2 is coming from Grace Randolph, someone who I never thought I would actually say would be where I'm hearing this from on this channel. But Grace Randolph, who we know has like a track record with some insider stuff, summer misses, summer hits, you know. But yeah, she said that she found out something interesting about Joker 2. She found out that Joker 2 is from Harley Quinn's perspective, which I think I've talked about previously being an idea. Uh, it's from Harley Quinn's perspective, a.k.a. Lady Gaga. And that's why it's a musical. That's how Harley sees things, which makes a lot of sense to me. If this is true, that makes a lot of sense to me as to why a lot of this movie could be a musical. I think I did mention an idea like this at one point when I was talking about Joker 2. The musical aspect could be something that's coming from the perspective of one character who might be warping things into this happy-go-lucky type of stuff, and that's where your musical numbers come in, which kind of then lines up with the fact that it's probably going to be more like a Star is Born and less of a Grease in the Heights. It's something that's not happening for every character. It's only happening for one character. So in comparison with that in mind, it does make sense to compare that more to a Star is Born versus, again, a Grease in the Heights something else um so i can't wait for joker 2 if this ends up being true i'll be fine with that it just all comes down to again how it's executed what do you guys think about all this down in the comment section below let me know if you haven't already of course subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links to all my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video.